What's up, Data Pipeliners? Welcome back to another episode on Writing Data Pipelines with Kedro. In today's episode, I'm here to show off a brand new plugin that I wrote last weekend called Kedro Great. Uh, and it's for the sole purpose of integrating your great expectations with Kedro Pipelines. It's super fast, super simple, uh, and it's a fantastic way to get your pipeline to run validations on your data without having to go through a lot of the extra steps involved in integrating Kedro and Great Expectations. Uh, so it comes with, of course, our Kedro hook, um, which is what we saw in our last video uh, based on Lim Huang's Kedro hook. Uh, but it also comes with some awesome command line functions that I'm going to show you guys today. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. So we can take a look right here at the documentation itself and the documentation clearly shows here uh, that Kedra Great is the easiest way to plug in your great expectations with Kedro. Um, and the way that it works is, of course, you just do a very simple pip install for Kedro Great. Uh, and then you can run this command here. This is the Kedro Great init command. And so this is a super easy command to get your pipeline to create validations. These are basic validations. Um, for great expectations based on your Kedro catalog. And so I think that's really super useful. Uh, if you remember in our last video, when we were trying to generate um, these validations for ourselves, we had to go through and then we had to write in, you know, uh, where's the source of the data? How does this data look like? What's the format, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, of course, that's also a very valid approach, um, but the truth is that we already have all this data. So there's no reason for us to re-input all the stuff if it's already available. And so that's what this plugin really is meant to do. It allows you to generate those great expectations based on your Kedro catalog data. So let's go ahead and give it a try. So Kedro great init is how we go. But first, of course, we need to do a pip install. So Opening up our PyCharm here, I already have our example pipeline, and it's our favorite Iris data set. This is actually the same pipeline as we had in the last video, uh, where we have our two um, data sources, which come from a Pandas version and a Spark version of the very same Iris data. So let's go ahead and do pip install kedro great, so that's kedro dash great, goes to PyPy and it installs the newest version. Now, all we need to do to generate our great expectations is we type in Kedro great init. And Kedro great init will go ahead and first call the great expectations init um, in order to generate the great expectations pipeline. As you can see here, this is the actual output from that command line argument. We can hit yes to proceed. And now we have inside of our inside of our directory here. So if we just refresh our directory, we have our great expectations um, expectations. Uh, unfortunately, we still don't have any expectations created. Uh, if we look inside of our our great expectations YAML file, we'll see that our data sources is still empty. So um, that's why our Kedro great plugin allows us to generate those data sources based on our Kedro context. And so the Kedro context, of course, includes our catalog here, which is our Pandas Iris data and Spark Iris. So let's go ahead and generate those when I close this file. So we're going to go ahead and generate. And what it's going to do is it's going to go and load up these different data sets, take a look at the data sets, figure out what kind of data it is, and then generate the data source based on that. So here we're going through and we've created already two new data sources. So now if we go check again inside of our great expectations YAML, we'll see we have our new data sources. We have our pandas iris data, Kedro great data source, and our spark iris data, Kedro great data source. So as you can see, um, the previous video, we had to do a bunch of commands to create these two data sources. With this single command, we were able to generate our two data sources automatically for us. Then what we can do also is generate the expectations. So great expectations, of course, comes with some basic validation um, profiling. Uh, and this is, according to their, to their own documentation, still an experimental feature. Um, but it's still very, very useful for us. 
So what we can do is we can generate these basic validation suites based on our scheduler context again. So if we go ahead and hit yes here, we're going to type in Y or just hit enter. What it's going to do is it's going to load all of our data and then do that profiling on the data itself. Once the profiling is completed, it's going to generate for us new expectations, which are going to show up inside of our expectations folder. And so now it's already completed. Uh, we've generated the expectations. And if we open it up here, we have our pandas iris data, which of course matches our catalog, as well as the pandas, I'm sorry, then the Spark Iris data, which matches the catalog as well. And if we open it up, the Kedro Great plugin has generated this basic.json expectation. And so this is based on the basic profiler. Um, and of course, it does very simple stuff where it will generate you know, the, the column, row counts, uh, et cetera, et cetera. One thing to note here, and this is important, um, is that as you can see inside of the expected table columns match ordered list, we already have the correct columns for the Spark Iris data. If you recall in the last video, this was a little bit of a, a little bit of a rough spot between generating our validations um, using great expectations um, and then having them uh, coincide with the data itself. Um, and that's because uh, when you generate a validation using great expectations, it doesn't use the load arguments that are already available to us inside of the catalog. By default, or using the normal great expectations application, it'll just load the data straight up using Spark. But because of our plugin with great, uh, Kedro Great, it actually uses the load arguments from the catalog in order to load that data correctly. And as you can see here, that load argument includes our header equals true. And so that's why inside of the basic JSON um, validation, we have correctly loaded the column list. And so that's uh, just so much, you know, it's so useful, this, this plugin. Um, a lot of great work went into it, uh, I guess, like speaking for myself, but I hope you guys find this very, very useful here. Um, and that's why I'm showing it off today. So now that we've done that, how do we run this guy? Well, uh, very, very simply, all we need to do is we just go ahead and modify our run.py in order to add a Kedro great hook. So what we do is we just do a simple import where we import Kedro great from Kedro great uh, and then add that in as a hook. Uh, and then all you need to do um, is go ahead and run the pipeline. Uh, but before we do that, let's go ahead and generate the documentation. So in order to generate documentation, um, you still use great expectations um, docs build. And so this will generate the documentation for us um, about the pipeline. Of course, we don't really have that many documentations except the currently available, um, the currently available validations. But here we have our pandas iris basic, um, as well as our uh, Spark Iris Basic. And actually, these validations are the ones that run uh, when we do our pipeline uh, validation. So that initial profiling creates these validations here for us. Uh, so that's why they show up here. OK, uh, and so how do we actually run this guy? All you need to do is very, very simple. Because we're using a Kedro hook, what happens is by default, great um, Kedro great will actually run that hook um, before any node runs. Um, and so if we take a look at the pipeline itself, so going into the pipeline, we have our two nodes. Um, one of them is a describe and one of them is a show. Uh, and here we are, we're taking the inputs of pandas iris data and spark iris data. Uh, and so these inputs right here will instead run um, before the node runs, the actual uh, validation on those inputs will run first. And so when we do Kedro run, what will happen is as the pipeline runs, um, as soon as we load the data um, from the from the source, that's when the Kedro great hook runs its validation. It generates the validation and then it passes that data back into the pipeline. And so now that we've run that guy, if we go ahead and rebuild our documentation, 
we should be able to see our brand new validation metrics uh, available to us. And here we go, opening up. And if you can look right below me, we have our two new validations right here. So it works very simple, very straightforward uh, in the way that it does this validation generation. Uh, and just to prove that those validations are correct, what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and modify the data to use, of course, our favorite species type, DE1. Um, let's go ahead and, uh, oops, generate this here. So we can go ahead and run our Kedro pipeline again. And what'll happen is it'll generate our validation. Do, do, do. And so as soon as that validation is complete, we can go ahead and regenerate our documents and then we'll be able to see how our validation fails. So I know that the next question that you're probably asking is, okay, that's great. We can get the validations after the pipeline runs, but what if I want to know immediately or after the pipeline runs when a failure happens? And so you can see right below, we have our two failures. Um, we have our uh, species type failure. So if we take a look here, we can see that, uh-oh, the distinct values, there's DE1 inside. Um, so that's great, but again, like what if I want to do like CICD for the pipeline? What if I want to make sure that the data is correct or the expected schemas or et cetera, et cetera, are generated properly um, without having to wait for the entire pipeline to run? Uh, so that's why Kedro Great comes with this few useful options here. Uh, and the most important, the one for that purpose is this fail fast and fail after pipeline run uh, option. And so what this does is it allows us to either let the pipeline fail immediately when it encounters one of these errors. So that's what the uh, fail fast means. So if we do fail fast true and try to rerun the pipeline, what's going to happen is as soon as it encounters the very first incorrect data asset right here, it tried to do pandas, it fails the pipeline. Uh, and so this way, it'll just immediately fail. Um, however, there are there may be some instances where you still want the pipeline to run through or run its course, um, and in that case, you can always use fail after pipeline run. And so that way, once you run the, the pipeline, it'll go through the entire pipeline, aggregating those failures, and then once the pipeline is complete, then it throws its, its exception. Uh, and so proof of that is if we do our build docs, once this pipeline runs, we should be able to see three brand new failures, not, not two, but three brand new failures. Uh, and that's because the first failure killed the other pipeline. So um, the, second, the second node couldn't run. And then with this fail after pipeline, both nodes ran and both nodes failed. And so we can see right here, we have our three brand new failures on top of our two other failures here. And that allows you, again, to create um, very nice CI CDs or even just do your testing on your own pipeline to ensure that you're not breaking things downstream for other pipeline users. And I think that's such a crucial part of collaborating on your pipelines is making sure that your pipelines are creating the data that you need. Now, there's a few other options that Kedro Great supports. Um, I'm just going to touch on them very quickly. We have our run before node and run after node options. Uh, these options allow you to run the pipeline based on um, the node that, uh, I'm sorry, uh, based on whether or not you want to check the data before you run it through a node or whether or not you want to check the data after it is run through a node. And so that allows you to set those options. You could, of course, do both. Um, or just one or the other. Uh, the next one is the suites types. So the suite type um, is actually a, kind of an interesting option here. Uh, when Great Expectations generates its own validations, what it'll do is it'll generate a dot warning uh, validation. And so you can take a look here on the left side, um, the Kedro Great plugin generates the basic dot JSON, but Great Expectations by itself will generate instead the um, a dot warning JSON. 
And so you can have uh, you can have any kinds of types here, any kind of suite types here underneath this expectation suite. Uh, and so Kedro Great allows uh, supports that ability to choose exactly which suites you want to run. Uh, and so, for example, if you only want to run like very simple suites, right? You don't want to go through the entire set of like very deep um, validation checks. You can just have a very light or shallow or 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 simple dot json file that collects those very um very fast checks uh for example like uh, schema checks which are um, a very quick check but still very very important uh, and so you can choose that granularity uh, and then finally uh the other option that you have here is you have the ability to to map your catalog names to the expectations that you the expectation suites that you want to use um, by default, again, um, Kedro Great will generate a an expectation suite based on the catalog.yaml name, so the name that's inside of the catalog YAML. But if you have generated an expectation before, or if you want to have a different expectation run, uh, you can use this expectations map to map your catalog name to the new um, expectation suite that you want to use. And what's really useful about this is that you can also use a list of expectation suites um, in order to uh, run multiple expectations, expectation suites for a single catalog. Uh, and so I think that's really useful. Uh, and this, of course, can be combined with your suite types so that you can run a collection of suites for your single catalog, um, but only a certain number of suite types. Um, and then also, if you have your, if you have any kind of um, a forced type inside of the mapping, then it will actually override your suite types um, that are available. Uh, and that's really uh, the, a very simple introduction, very quick introduction to Kedra Great. Uh, so Kedra Great is, of course, still uh, in a beta mode. Um, I'm still constantly working on this guy. Uh, and of course, I would love your your guys' feedback. Is this thing useful for you guys? Um, and will is is there a way that we can make it better? And if you guys have any pull requests, I'm very happy to take a look uh, and potentially merge them in to Kedra Great because uh, I think that it's a pretty fantastic piece of software that we can use uh, and build out uh, and make uh, Kedro a fantastic piece of software uh, integrated with great expectations. And so if you guys like this video, make sure you button that like, sub that scribe, and ring that ding if you want to know when we are pipelining. And hopefully I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, enjoy. I hope you all have a wonderful day and bye-bye.